Welcome to the Celebration of Life for Edward Kimmel. I uh, appreciate you all being here. I'm sorry for the conditions you have to all be under, but you're uh, making us do. So uh, but we'll try to make it uh, uh, as pleasant as we can. And if it gets too hot, or we can take a break or, or whatever. So. Because this is going to be kind of an informal service. That's I think how Eddie would have liked it. And uh, so we'll begin with a prayer. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the source of all mercy and the God of all consolation. He comforts us in all our sorrows so that we can comfort others in their sour sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. The Lord be with you. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God of grace and glory, we remember before you today our brother Eddie. We thank you for giving him to us to know and to love as a companion in our pilgrimage on earth. In your boundless compassion, console us who mourn. Give us your aid so we may see in death the gate to eternal life, that we may continue our course on earth in confidence, until by your call we are reunited with those who have gone before us. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And if you'll uh, join me in the song at 502, and that's amazing grace. We'll see how well you do it and how many verses. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on his glorious throne. Before him will be gathered all the nations, and he will separate them one from the other as sheep separates the as the shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will place the sheep on his right hand, but the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those uh, at his right hand, O come, O blessed of my Father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundations of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food, and I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. And I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. And I was naked, and you clothed me. And I was sick, and you visited me. And I was in prison, and you came to me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed thee? Or thirsty and give thee drink? And when did we see thee a stranger and welcome thee? Or naked and clothe thee? And when did we see thee sick or in prison and visit thee? And the king will answer them, Truly I say to you, as you did it to the one of the least of these of my brethren, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left, Depart from me, you cursed, into the eternal fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. And I was thirsty, and you gave me no drink. And I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not clothe me. 
sick and in prison and you did not visit me? Then they will answer, Lord, when did we see thee hungry or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister to thee? Then you will answer them, truly I say to you, as you did it not to the one of the least of these, you did it not to me. And they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Here ends our reading. My second reading is uh, John 3, 16. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever knew him would have eternal life. And John 3, 17, of course, is Jesus did not come into the world to condemn the world, but that the world would be saved through him. So what does all this mean? Well, it depends on what church you go to, right? Some churches um, like to preach that, oh, you have to do this and you have to do that. You, have, you know, if you've got to go to church so many times and then you're going to get into heaven, all right? Well, then what is the gift? What is the good news then, right? The good news is that God gave his only begotten son who died on our cross for us and for our sins. There's not enough we can do to earn our way into heaven. Just because I'm a pastor here and I go to church every Sunday, I get paid for it. Though. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh, that doesn't make me any better person than a person who struggles with their faith. Faith is a gift, and it's a gift again for those of us who have faith to comfort those around us who aren't given the gift, right? And those who aren't given the gift have less responsibility than those of us who have it and have to share it. And if we don't, that all the more worse for us, right? And so how, you know, I always, when at a time like this, people always come up to me, how do we know if so-and-so made it to heaven, then who, how they, or if they didn't make it to heaven? And there's a, there's a simple way of doing that. And that is, how do you tell the sheep, right, from the goats? How do you tell? Through their actions. Through their actions. Because so I hear people say all the time, well, I'm saved because I believe in God. Well, the devil believes in God, and I don't think he's getting there anytime soon. <laughs> so, so what is it that uh, it's a gift that God gave us? Whether we've been blessed with with uh, the knowledge and and the uh, and the faith, knowing that Jesus Christ came for us, or those who struggle. Hey, I admire those who struggle and who search and who do that. No, I know Eddie was one of those, right? He'd have preferred a Viking funeral. Right? Yeah. <laughs> well, we'll give them a little one. We're gonna, Paul is going to light this uh, candle for us right now. And this is the Paschal candle. We'll think of it as, as his uh, Viking ship. <laughs> because this is the candle we light uh, when uh, to symbolize when Christ came into our world as an infant, when Christ came back into our world as an adult. And when somebody leaves our world, <laughs> and this is the symbol of the light of God who is in all of us, right? There's a person here. And, and, yeah. So that. Uh, yes, it's all recorded. Uh, so, you know, the fact that. Um, you know, Eddie struggled a little bit. I, you know, that that's great. And I, we're, we're all in a in a on a journey, and we're all at a different level. We're not, none of us are one over the other, and we all have to make our own way. But knowing, as a Christian, that Jesus died for all people, all faiths, every, and that the way we know is how they know Christ is through the things they do, right? They show love for those around them. They help those around them. They don't hurt people. They don't go out and, and abuse others around them. They're, they're wonderful to be around. That's how you know if they're a sheep or a goat. Right? And that's it. It's that simple. Well, no, I think there is one thing you have to do to get there. that too. Eternal life. And that is you have to accept the gift. And of course, we have. Um, uh, so, when is the gift offered to you, right? Well, I believe right after you die, right when you die, you're standing before I am the gate, I am the door, right? I am the way. You're standing in front of Jesus. And you have your choice. You can turn and walk away, 
or you can give a hug to the person who loved everybody so much that he gave his only, he gave his life for all of you. And for me. And hopefully for me. And uh, so th th that's a certain hope. So you know, if you're if you're worried about somebody's faith, they're struggling, you know, when somebody's struggling with their faith, or, or, you know, just help them and, and give them encouragement and give them love. Don't, don't, oh, I don't know, you know, don't play that game with them. Help them out. And because it, it's a blessing to have that faith, and it's really hard not to. And to live a life without it, I'm blessed. So, and, uh, uh, but, you know, I see so many people who struggle, and, and uh, uh, of course, we'll pray for them, and, uh, we pray for Eddie, but we know where he is right now. So we don't really have to do a lot. But we pray for all of you here uh, who are going to miss him so much because um, missing one of God's sheep is missing love, is missing a piece of that whole love that, that you have were given on this earth. And when part of that love is taken away, that's, that's tough. Right? But Eddie's with all the people that loved him before. And so um, he's having a party right now. There's a ship right there. Uh, but we, we've got, we're going to have a little time, though, where you can share uh, stories of Eddie. I, only, I was only blessed to meet him a few times, and that was a few years ago. And then he kind of went, went on with his life. So uh, it would be nice to hear some stories from you. If you could come up to the microphone, do we have any who would like to come forward at this time? You can. Yeah, you can take off your mask, please. <laughs> I think so. That's it. Nope. I'm getting an insert thinking out. All right, now for a feedback check. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, as most of you know, uh, I'm Jason, and he's an uh, older brother. Uh, yeah, so I'm here to uh, embarrass him on last time. <laughs> kind of my job. And I just wanted to uh, tell a story, you know, of our brotherhood. You know, growing up together for 24 years of his life. At first, you know, it was rough. We didn't like each other <laughs> at all. I would say fighting all the time. But, you know, just one day it clicked that, wait a minute. Why do we have to hate each other and, you know, be best friends? As they eventually uh, became inseparable, Every, we did everything to get there. And he was one of the brightest lights in my life. He pushed me to better myself. He was always bettering himself. He met a wonderful woman in Ellie. And I say that just continue to better him and see that, you know, just being proud that I was able to call him my brother, my best friend, the closest person to me. So I guess I'm just here to say uh, I miss you, Ed, and I'll always love you. Thank you. Never. Never. Ever. So 
Yes, I ran up, playing the pants, a little bit later I would hear, okay, I'd get another phone call. You need to come back. <laughs> the other one did. I'm like, wait a minute. What are you doing? So that was my experience. But I will tell you the best thing that I know about Eddie is because he thought I was the coolest person because I played Legos. <laughs> and he got my collection of Legos with the kids because my kids had Legos. And I gave them to Annie because of Jason and Eddie. They just were so creative with Legos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to try this. Um, what I did is I printed out some of the remembrances from the Facebook um, group that I had started on Remembering Eddie. And I thought some of these were kind of funny, so can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. All right. So the first one was um, Marceline Greenhaw. She said, I've known Eddie since elementary school, but we didn't really become friends until high school. He was one of those guys who jokingly acted indifferent when it came to school, but he was crazy smart. He was also one of the best bowlers I've ever seen, and never made me feel bad about being probably one of the worst bowlers he'd ever seen. <laughs> I honestly can't think of a time this guy ever mistreated anyone. He was a genuinely good person. The world truly misses out what people like Eddie are in it. Rest in peace. Okay, <laughs> you made it through one. <laughs> Um, Caleb Flewellen. Eddie was humbly brilliant. He would sometimes nap through pre-calc class and wake up for the test, which he would probably get a perfect score on, even if the rest of us nailed it because it was so difficult. He was smart and kind and an all-around good buddy to have. Jerry Dalva. So a few years ago, Eddie came to Florida and lived with us for a few months before moving back to Maine to spend time quality time with his father. He had a picture on there of um, Eddie in the back seat pretending to eat this huge bag of dog food. <laughs> and he said this was one of our trips to the grocery store. He was always a character. From this picture to many other times, he would just make us laugh with his quirky personality. I know I will miss him. Um, Jamie, and I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. I knew Eddie as a little boy. I used to babysit him and Jason. And he was such an amazing little boy with such a great spirit. I didn't know him as a teenager or a young man, but from everything I have read and seen, I can see that he carried that great, amazing spirit with him. I'm truly sorry to hear your loss, Paula and Greg. He was taken way too soon. This one is actually from someone here in the audience, and I hope he doesn't mind when I read it. Connor Chapman. Still can't believe it's real. Losing you is not something I would ever have expected. I've had the amazing privilege of having grown up with you since kindergarten and having you become one of my closest and best friends somewhere along the way. I can honestly say my life and many, many others We'll never be the same without you. Ed, I hope you rest easy, my friend. This was from um, another person that grew up with him, Natasha. I don't have any pictures, but boy, do I have a lot of memories from growing up with you, Eddie. From the crazy outdoor adventures to the hide-and-go-seek inside when it was raining. You were like my little brother growing up, and it was great. Hope you're smiling down at us. All who love you very much and keep an eye on us as well. Excuse this pastor. Raise hell up there. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stephen Babb, who he used to bowl a lot with, said, you, my friend, are gone way too soon. But I know our memories will, with you will live on. 
this, one of my proudest moments against you as a great opponent, and he had a picture of himself and Eddie both with trophies, first and second place. <laughs> and he goes, we had a lot of great times and nail biter matches. I'm gonna miss you, my friend, Rip Edward. And then he had 10 X's and said, and this 300 is just for you. <laughs> um, Megan, I had the privilege of knowing Eddie since we were just little kids in elementary school. He rode my mom's school bus, was always really quiet, and as his bus states, had a rough exterior. But he was one of the kindest kids in our class. He was also an incredible bowler. I remember seeing him at the bowling alley shortly after we graduated high school and being amazed at his skill and then asking him to teach me the tricks. <laughs> of course, he was modest and said he wasn't really that good. <coughs> The world lost a great guy, but what a game for heaven. See you again someday, my friend. Sending lots of love, hugs, and prayers. Jordan and Ernie. I met Eddie in middle school. Moving to a new school in eighth grade was really hard for me, but knowing Eddie through his brother Jason made things so much easier. I was always jealous of his ability to sleep anywhere, especially through class. <laughs> I will never forget the grin he would give me when he would get our when we would get our test back and he of course would ace them every time because he was a genius. He was also a phenomenal bowler, quick witted, and even through his tough exterior, was so kind. You are missed by so many, my friend. Please be in prayer for the sweet family. <laughs> Alright, so another one in the audience. <laughs> This is from Dustin. I don't even know what to say. Words don't do justice. The pain I and many others are feeling at your loss, Ed Boy. You are truly one of a kind. Excuse us again. And a damn good friend. <laughs> I shared many laughs and hours upon hours of game time with you. And I would trade everything to get even another hour of time with you again. My weekdays off are never going to be the same, and I'm going to miss spending those days gaming with you. May you rest in peace, my friend and brother. I love and miss you dearly. Um, this is from Tammy. I would miss how you could never not smile around Eddie. He would always have something that would get one from you. This breaks our hearts, and we're thinking about the entire family. Um, Lynn Cho is another one that grew up knowing Eddie when he was really little. He will always be our little Eddie, running around like a wild, adorable little guy, looking for something to get into. <laughs> Gone way too soon. Um, this is from John. I worked with Eddie and Allie. They worked on the bowling side at spare time, and I was a server at the ground round. He was my absolute favorite. What a great kid he was. He was so funny, smart. He had his whole life ahead of him, and this is a devastating, tragic loss. We had this silly thing we did. Anytime either one of us walked in the room, I can't remember how or why it even started, but we would meow like a cat every single time we saw each other and just laugh about it. He always put a smile on my face. Um, I'm not, I didn't know this young man, but Derek Hayden, you'll be forever missed and never forgotten, my friend. This is so unbelievable. It seems like yesterday we were busting out ramps together at Alcom. And this is from um, Becky Gatchel. I don't know if she's here. I have known this special young man since he was born. He was always with the parents of the Wentworths growing up. Always very quiet and very polite when I saw him. He will be missed by all and will never be forgotten. R.I.P. Eddie, love Becky. Um, Wendy Bonson. I don't have pictures of Eddie, but I do remember him as a little boy at softball games where his dad played on the same team as my husband. My daughter is just a few months older, and they used to toggle around together at the ball games. This breaks my heart. Um, Mary Ann, God bless you. We will miss your smiling face, your willingness to help people out. Brian, 
said, I heard this on the radio a few days. It was like, I know that name, then it hit me. You were a highly intelligent young man with such a brilliant future. Katie Burbank. Um, I don't know if you know her, but she goes, I had the pleasure of meeting Eddie once when he was just born, and then again about 20 years later. She was my nurse when I had Eddie. <laughs> what a polite and respectful young man he was. He will be missed by so many. And then I, I don't know if Marsha's here or not. Do you want me to read yours too? Okay. <laughs> and then Marsha, I didn't know Edward that well, but I know how much his Nana Jackie loved him <laughs> and Jason. I remember going with my mom and Jackie to one of Edward's bowling matches. Mm -hmm. He did awesome. This is such a tragedy, such a sweet young man to be taken so soon. My love and prayers go out to all of you at this sad time. Thank you all for sharing your pictures. It gives us a little glimpse of this child, young man he was. And I think I made it through. <laughs> people pardon in peace uh, that we may be cleansed from all our sins and serve you with a quiet mind. And grant to all who mourn a sure confidence in your loving care that casting all their sorrows on you, uh, they may know the consolation of your love. Give courage and faith to those who are bereaved uh, that they may have strength to meet the days ahead and the comfort of a holy and certain hope and in the joy and expectation of eternal life with those they love. And help us, we pray, in the midst of things we cannot understand, to believe and trust in the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sin, and the resurrection to everlasting life. And God of all grace, you sent your Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, to bring life and immortality to light. We give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of his death. And by his resurrection, has opened the kingdom of heaven to all his sheep. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also, and that either death or life, or things present or things to come, shall separate us from the love which is in Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. 
uh, you can join me in the Lord's Prayer if you like. I'm going to be using um, the trespasses. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. <clears throat> into your hands, O merciful Savior, we command your servant, Daddy. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy to the blessed rest of everlasting peace and into the glorious company of the saints in life. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Okay. And we have a song we're going to put up right now. I'm going to move this one. Uh, yeah. <laughs> dancing around, so, uh, no, no, you know, just a second, just a